So we have also added um, a new type of submission to uh, the PAP guide called a concept outline. Now, these have been uh, in use uh, at NSF, but we're now, we've now formally introduced it uh, into the PAP guide. And what it is, is it's a concise summary of a project idea that contains information about the prospective PIs, um, uh, the, the relevant uh, NSF organizational units, project title keywords, and a brief narrative um, of the idea that, that fit to any special criteria for a proposal type or funding opportunity. These are not letters of intent um, or preliminary proposals. The primary purpose of requiring a concept outline is to ensure that the concept that's being proposed by the prospective PI is appropriate uh, for the proposal or, or type of funding opportunity. Um, and, it, and it's to help reduce administrative burden associated with submission of a full proposal. So you see the types of proposals that require submission of concept outlines. They're planning, planning proposals, rapid, eager, and raised proposals. Now, those are not new requirements for these proposal types. Those proposal types already required that the prospective PI contact the program officer prior to submitting a proposal. So what happens is these concept outlines are considered by uh, the NSF program officers or program offices to determine the appropriateness of the work um, uh, that's, that's being proposed. And then the PI will receive an email that specifies whether a full proposal may be submitted. Now for these types of proposals, the planning rapid early, the eagers and the raises, you, the PI then takes that email and includes it as part of their proposal in, in the section in research.gov called the program officer concurrence email. It's, it, is, um, it is uploaded and it is required um, and, it, and it cannot be, um, the proposal cannot be submitted without such a concurrence letter. Concept outlines can also be submitted at any time by PIs or prospective PIs that are seeking early feedback uh, on the appropriateness uh, of, of their project um, and, uh, and whether it is relevant for a specific funding opportunity. So there are two ways that these concept outlines can be submitted. One is via email. And the other is via use of a new pros what's called the prospect system. And the funding opportunity will let you know which way you are supposed to submit that concept outline. So this uh, prospect system um, is, um, is a prospect, obviously you can see it's a another acronym and it's short for the uh, Program Suitability and Proposal Concept Tool. Um, if there's an NSF funding opportunity that requires a concept outline, uh, it will there, there will be instructions on whether it's being done by use of email or via prospect um, and specific guidance on email formatting or, or use of this web form. Now, Sometimes you might see this in a funding opportunity in a, pro in a program solicitation, but you might also see it in a dear colleague letter. So a dear colleague letter might, for example, uh, call for or ask for proposals to be submitted to uh, for uh, planning grants. And that dear colleague letter might say you are required to use the prospect tool for the submission of your concept outline. Or that dear colleague letter might tell you, oh, that concept outline can be submitted uh, via email. So you always wanna make sure you are um, uh, reading that to see where you are, how you should submit that concept outline. The tool itself, um, it's a web form. So you're complete, There's there's uh, there, there'll be pre-filled information um, and also drop downs and other uh, 
fields that you just that, that are uh, freeform um, entries, you have to have a um, a login.gov account to access uh, this tool and to use it. Um, we did have a the and when I say we, I mean the policy office. Uh, held a webinar last fall on the use of concept outlines generally. And then we, and as part of that webinar, we provided a demonstration of the prospect system. So um, this link here will take you directly to that, to that webinar and.